Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. To this this day, I'm in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Yesterday, my wife and I were walking along the beach, uh, praying the Rosary. We we do yesterday we did something kind of cool. We I prayed two decades quietly as she prayed two decades quietly, and then we prayed a common decade together, and so that kind of made a, a a set of five. And so we had a time of quiet meditation and then praying together. But last night, I don't know why God loves Jesus more, but I mean. <laughs> God loves Cindy more, but as we're walking along, she sees a huge dolphin surfing a wave, a big, big wave, and I'm and she's going, it's right there, and I go, where, where, where? I just couldn't, just couldn't find it in time. But beautiful time uh, surfing with Cindy here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're so glad to be here. You know, the thing about it is, surfers know that you can't surf without a wave. You really need to have a wave in order to surf, and so you paddle out and you wait, and that's kind of what part of our walk with the Lord is like. We got to paddle out. And wait, wait upon the Lord. Wait for His move of the Holy Spirit. You know, so many people like me, especially ADHD boy. You know, I love having ADHD, but the people around me don't too much. But I mean, uh, one of the reasons why I, uh, I think uh, I, I, I get a lot of new creative ideas is because I see opportunities and I move on inspiration. But sometimes it's not inspiration; it's just, you know, my impulses. But you know. Uh, so I want to go out and get things done. But you, when you, as a surfer, I've learned you can't just paddle out and ride a wave. You've got to paddle out and wait for the wave. And sometimes it doesn't seem like any wave is coming at all. But that's it where those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall surf and not grow weary. They will hang ten and not grow faint. But there is that element of paddling out and waiting on the Lord. And when you do, then when you do, do your mission for the Lord, what the Lord's calling you to do in your work, regardless of what that work is. It's not going on your own strength, but you're going on the power of the Holy Spirit. So we are we are welcome uh, those times of just waiting. I mean, surfers are like, my mom used to say we were like sentinels out in the water, looking out to sea, waiting for the surf to come. And that's the way our hearts should be. We should always be out. We should always, all throughout the day, be just saying, be saying, Lord, speak, your servant is listening. Uh, I have to tell you one more thing before we have our guest, a great guest. I almost think I should book him for 10 shows. <laughs> but uh, he's a surfer priest, by the way, but it's, uh, it's a surprise who he is. So I'm not going to tell you yet. But Cindy and I got to tell you guys something. We're having our winter luau retreat uh, here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. On December uh, 8th, people will gather, and we're going to have a morning uh, surf session right here in Cocoa Beach. We'll be teaching lessons for you and your keiki or your ohana and then we, some might go up to the Kennedy Space Center, Center, a center and check out the tour there. Others of us with the motorcycles will do a renegade rosary run. And then that evening at 6.30, Cindy's going to start off the evening by teaching the ladies uh, hula. And then we're going to uh, have our luau. And then the next morning we get up and we're getting on our cruise. And Father Scott Searcy, my, my parish priest, is going to be with us. And so we'll have Mass every day. And he will teach in his homilies on the three, three theological virtues, and I will teach on the four cardinal virtues afterwards. And then we'll have a time of just dialogue and discussion and time for a retreat and, uh, and meditation and pondering what the Lord is saying to you and, and journaling and you know, writing the thoughts down that God has given you. You know, We just got back from a beautiful pilgrimage to Greece. I think it was an 11-day pilgrimage. You know, If any of you, anybody's ever been on a pilgrimage, they know it's an endurance run. It's a, like an obstacle course. You just never quit. So we have something totally different for you. So if you want to stave off winter a little bit, go to our deepadventure.com website. Check it out. By the way, we've got the least expensive cruise that I could find in the, to, the, to the Caribbean uh, this winter for a four-night cruise, and it's on a great ship. I, when I wrote my second book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, I, um, I went out on that ship three consecutive times by myself, isolated myself on the cigar deck. They don't have that anymore. And I just I just sat there and I and I and I and I worked as as a, as a, uh, and just worked and worked as I, I wrote through. It's hard work to write a book, but I was isolated from the world, and was able to get the first draft done in those 21 days or 28 days at sea. So, anyway, now we have with us though uh, our, our great our guest, fellow surfer, 
Father, how do you, you know what, Father? I'm not sure how I say your last name. It's Father Eric Caden. Is that the way I said that? That's last exactly name? right. Father Eric Caden, surfer priest. Surfer priest. I got to watch some of your YouTubes getting ready for this, and I'm like, dude, I, this guy and my life are like so parallel, except for I'm holier than him. But other than that, it's pretty much the That's same. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our show. Well, thank you for having me. Um, one thing I just wanted to add to your, your opening monologue there. On, I was re reflecting as you were saying about as a surfer, you have to paddle out. That's important. And then you wait, but there's something extraordinary even about waiting as you're floating. Yeah. In what can seem to be the middle of the ocean, you're held. You're held by this greatness, by this power. I mean, you know, metaphorically, you're held by God. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're waiting not alone. I mean, even when you sit out there, I mean, I'm sure you've had the same experience. It's naturally so prayerful and, and you can't, you don't feel isolated. You may be alone, but you're not isolated in any way. You're mm -hmm. suspended and, and held and embraced. Even when you're and, alone out there. In, in fact, when, yes. there's a crowd, in it, when, when, there's a, when there is, the bigger the surf, the less people there are usually as it gets That's bigger. Right. But even when there's a group of people, you, surfers don't do a lot of chattering. Tend to be alone. Right. Alone. It's a time of solitude. And so you feel, I just feel, wanted to add that. That's so beautiful because I never thought of that. You feel the rise and the fall of the wa wave, like mm -hmm. uh, maybe John felt the breath of Jesus. You know, at the last. That's supper. right. Yeah, well, it's cool even further. It's like a heartbeat. It is. It, of have the you ocean. ever seen? Have you ever seen the uh, a, a fast, a speeded up uh, look at the ocean over the course of a, a several days, just just mm -hmm. the beach, where it looks like the the ocean is breathing in and out when the tide rises and falls. That's right. Yeah. Oh, we, so good. We got so much to talk about. Uh, I really mean it. I'm probably going to beg you to come back after we do this uh, to finish because we got so much to talk about. But I would like to just ask you to go ahead and can you just uh, tell us your story uh, of your, your initial uh, call, conversion and call to the priesthood? I don't want to interrupt you. We're going to carry it over to oh, the next yeah. segment. And just, sure. Because it's so fascinating. So much I mean, like I'll, what I went I'll, through. I'll like. start, you know, with... I'm from Boston area. I'm a, preach, a priest of the Archdiocese of Boston. And I grew up here in Boston. And so we have the ocean. Um, I spent every summer down by the beach and, and a very Irish Catholic family. So we would go to mass every Sunday and occasionally say grace before meals. But our faith was important in as much as it defined kind of our Irish Catholicism went to Catholic schools, but I can't say that I spent a lot of personal time talking to God really. And, <clears throat> but I was always into great adventures from the youngest age. I remember thinking when people would ask, what do you want to do when you grow up? Not knowing exactly, but thinking whatever it is, I want to do something great and bold. I want to love as big as possible in whatever a little seven or eight year old boy could think. Mm. And it had different iterations, different ideas. At one point I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, at one point I wanted to be a great surgeon, any number of things. And I remember uh, when I was 18 in the, one of the winters, my friend and I, my best friend and I would, would ski a lot on weekends. And one day we're driving back from one of the mountains in Vermont and he turns to me and he says, you know, this summer, we should go learn how to surf. And we thought, yeah, seems like a great idea. <laughs> and that's about the extent of the discernment we had. We got <laughs> home, we said, let's go to Mexico and learn how to surf. And, and then we thought we might not be able to get a job in Baja. So we didn't know anything. And we looked at a map and we saw that San Diego was as far south as you could go in California. So we said, let's go to San Diego. Well, listen, we got to take a break, Father. We got to take a break, Father. So, All right. so I dig on that. Like, I know that feeling of I've got to get as far south as I can. I remember when I first lived here in, lived here in Florida, I thought, I've got to get as far south as I can. I never hadn't been in a winter in a long time, and it was winter mm -hmm. in Florida. It was freezing down here. It was at least 70 degrees cold, you know. So I just, oh, drove, I just drove all the way cold. down to Key West, and I rented a room, which is the southernmost room in mm -hmm. Key West, <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get warmed up. We're talking with Father Eric Caden, and we're going to get rolling more on his uh, – 
surfing adventures with the Lord and all the other great adventures he's, he's experiencing in life as he's abandoned himself to God's will. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guy, Bear Wozniak. We have Father Eric uh, Caden with us, and you can see mm -hmm. uh, how cool he is if you want to, because you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, and uh, you can watch the video version of this. We have a, a lot of people uh, watching the YouTube versions now. It's kind of cool to to have uh, have them because we know that seventy to eighty percent of the people watching YouTube channels are young men, and that's, that's what we're right. trying to reach. So, you young men that's watching this, we're here for you, Father Eric. Uh, so there was this kind of this hold hold my beer moment, and you said, "Let's go to." Southern California and you guys. Let's so go what Southern happened? California. We told our parents and they said, what? We said, we're doing it. And so we thought we need to prepare to learn how to surf. So we watched Point Break, the original <laughs> version, about 20 times. <laughs> and Endless Summer 1 and 2. Oh, dude. Over and over again. Oh, dude. Endless Summer. If anybody hasn't seen those. Oh, man. Love you it. should watch it. Right now, you should pause this after you've liked forget, and subscribed. Forget about yeah, And then... Yeah. <laughs> And then go watch that. Go watch a little so, Jamie O'Brien uh, uh, YouTube videos too. Those are crazy. That's right. So we watched we watched those on a loop over and over again. We thought, okay, we can do this. And so we start driving across the country. And on the way out, as it turned out, my friend was sick for most of the trip, so he's sleeping in the back of the car, and I'm just driving and driving and driving. You should watch us and on YouTube, the guys. You should see how he drives. I just drive like this. Actually, I don't go like this too much. It Move looks like you're milking like a real tall cow. I got to tell because you. Because the middle of the country is pretty flat and straight. So it's more of like yeah, no arm movement. And so as we're driving, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm just looking to have a conversation just to pass the time. But my, my friend's sleeping a lot. Now, I'm an 18-year-old guy at this point, which means I'm not that very – I'm not very deep. So I don't have much to say. But I just right. want to talk. Yeah. So each night we'd pull over somewhere and camp out and it took five days. Now on the fourth night we were in Utah in Capitol Reef National Park, which is a spectacular place, Red Rock Canyons. And we'd pull in and we pull up to this mesa and we climb up a few hundred feet high, throw our sleeping bags out. And I remember thinking, all right, I need to talk. Now again, nothing to say, no real depth to anything I want to talk about. I just want to have a conversation. And my friend wants nothing to do with this. He's tired. He goes, I want to go to sleep. I'm like, no, no, no. We're talking. And he goes, no, no, no. I'm going to sleep. But I remember getting pretty agitated and mad at him. And he points to the edge of the mesa, right to the edge of the cliff. And he said to me, why don't, why don't you just go pray? Go talk to someone thinking, else. What? <laughs> and... Now, neither of us were particularly faithful or church going or prayerful. And so I remember thinking, what are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, yeah. He got really excited. He doubled down. Yeah, you should go pray. So I thought, you know what? Fine, I'll show you. And out of spite, no goodwill or good intentions on my part, out of pure spite, I said, I'll show him. So I walk over to the edge of the cliff. As I'm walking down, I'm thinking to myself, what on earth am I supposed to do now? I said, all I know is I have to sit out here at least 15 minutes because I'm not walking back mm -hmm. um, defeated. I'm going to win. I'm going to show him. So I sit down and I think, what do I do now? And I know how to pray an Our Father and a Hail Mary. But I think to myself, I can't do that for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have prayed the rosary. Didn't think of that. So I sit down. And, of course, the sun is setting and the whole canyon 
is lighting up. It's and spectacular. You know that when the sun is setting in a, in a situation like that, every little uh, crease in the in the in the texture of the of the landscape pops out more because of the little shadow it throws. Oh, it does. I mean, it comes alive. Light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you see sometimes the animals. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It was just spectacular. So I sit down and I think, well, I don't know what to do. So I got nothing to lose. And so I just started to introduce myself to God, which to anyone who's listening is great advice. I mean, that was mm -hmm. God's providence mm -hmm. for sure. And I just started telling him everything about myself. I told him my favorite breakfast cereal, what mm -hmm. kind of car I drove. I told him my name. I told him my favorite color. And for 15 minutes, I had the longest, most awkward introduction. And it was fantastic. And when I finished, and this was a moment I'll never forget, that really transformed how I think and ultimately led to where I am now. In a way that was so personal and it's hard to describe, I recognized I wasn't crazy. I knew, as much as I know that I'm talking to you right now, I knew that someone was listening. I wasn't quite sure exactly who, but I was ferociously curious. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't pretend like I didn't know someone was listening. And I had to find out who that was. Mm -hmm. And, and the way God works, we arrived in San Diego the next day. And within a few hours, we blew all the rest of our money on surfboards. <laughs> and a lesson from some old, one of the old timers who was in the surf shop. Do you remember it, his name? Said, you know, I don't. I shouldn't right. make it up, but I'm not yeah, going to. Yeah. And we said, if we buy two surfboards, will you give us a lesson? And he said, sure. And God bless him. He took a big swig of Jack Daniels mm -hmm. and took us right out to Pacific Beach. Yeah, my, son used, went to, out. my son used to surf there a lot when he was in the Navy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. And so, of course, you would know this. He had us begin right on the beach, lying on the surfboard, pretending to paddle in the sand, and yeah, then popping right. up. Right. And I remember thinking, well, I watched Keanu Reeves do this really <laughs> quickly. So this can't be that hard. And I'll, It's I'll hard. It's really hard. Of course it's hard. <laughs> but you know what? The beginning is, is so much fun. The initial, when you first teach someone to surf, it's immediately fun. To get oh, yeah. to the next level takes a lot of work, but right, right away, it's the best it's time fun. ever. Yeah. And so, like I, skydiving. I, yeah. That first jump, you know? <laughs> That's right. There's a big Especially smile. Skydiving the, in big, Hawaii. the big smile comes on people's faces, you know, the minute they jump. Not before, but the moment they jump. Oh, before they think to themselves, this is the worst decision of my life. Why did I do this? <laughs> Because you know what you don't anticipate, again, for those of you listening who have not been skydiving. So you think, okay, maybe I can do this. But you're in a plane going a couple hundred miles an hour sideways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a stable environment. Yeah. And then you jump and you think, this is nuts. And, and the plane and so, starts emptying, right? And you're like, why are there fewer people here than earlier? Yeah, where are they going? But yeah, you make that. Disappear. When you, you make, jump, they, they just disappear. But there's the rush of energy, just like when you surf. So I interrupted you. But yeah, there is that oh, immediate yeah, no, joy. That, that, yeah. rush of, that rush of energy. That first and wave you catch. I know. I used to teach surfing as well. And one of the things I would say, and it drove this friend of mine who's very analytically minded. He wanted exact steps on how to surf, when to stand up. And what you should and do I at the gym to get ready, right? All that stuff. Too. Exactly. Like, no, you, you just got to go surf, dude. And he <laughs> said to me, when do you stand up? And my first response was, JP. When the music starts playing in your head, that's when you stand up. And he said, uh, what are you talking about? And I said, you'll so, just know. Dude, that's awesome. That's perfect. You just know. As, yeah. soon as, the, as soon as your board catches the wave, everything comes alive and the music starts. And he looked at me and he goes, I hate you. I love this. I'm going to use that because like I was teaching, uh, we had John O'Brien and his two daughters, mm -hmm. Annie and Kat, uh, Gracie out here the other day. And you know how people, when they first feel it, they'll step, they'll jump up too soon. But yes. The music didn't start yet. You know what you'll know when the music starts because there's that powerful. It it's, there's a real rush. Yeah. You no, know, I have to warn you. Not everyone will receive that answer well or that <laughs> advice well. If anything, it'd be infuriated. He said, "I'm sitting out there. I was teaching him in Waikiki, and he's Where, sitting canoes? out there. And he goes at canoes. You're right out. Yeah. Right. Well, right outside. Yeah. Right outside there. And yeah. we're sitting there, and he, he's telling me, "I'm out there. 
And I'm thinking, he gave me no instructions. What music? I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> when do I stand up? <laughs> so, but that first, that first time out, one of the funny moments I remember is my friend went first. And he, the, the, the old timer sent him out. And he was teaching me a few things. And within two minutes, he comes running in, terrified. And he goes, ah, sh 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 shark. And the fellow <laughs> says, what? And he said, what did it look like? And that's when I first learned how to tell the difference between a dolphin and a shark. <laughs> and he said, if the fin bobs up and down, that's a dolphin. It's a dolphin. Yeah. If it's side to side, it's a shark. By the way, and last night, my, as my wife and I were walking and staying in the rosary mm -hmm. together, a dolphin caught a wave. It was beautiful. I, thought, I don't I know, know if I Which is that the most right. wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and you you've probably with, been surfing with dolphins. Yeah, you have too, where you've rode in a wave oh. and the dolphin's in the wave. Yeah, they're right there in it. And yeah. they're a much better surfer than we are. <laughs> well, listen, you got one minute. You got to close this segment before we can get back oh. into the rest of the story. And I keep interrupting you. So he I know, comes no. running in, there's so, a shark, and you find out it's not a shark. It's a and, then, and then the old timer starts laughing and he says, no, 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 no. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And then, I mean, I remember we went out and and you just catch these little waves, these little ripples. Right. Everything comes alive. And then, of course, being in San Diego, which I think is one of the most beautiful places in the world to watch yes. sunsets. Oh, my God. It almost inevitably oh, always yeah. sets like right over the ocean. Yeah. And then it turns and the that, whole sky lights up. Ugh. And the, in, in Hawaii, it's more common. But there, too, you'll see sometimes the, the orange sun pop mm -hmm. uh, uh, blue right as it's setting. It, you know, it, well, it's... Yeah. I know, and it's just it's spectacular. And I'll conclude with this part. One of the things that is so extraordinary, I noticed it in San Diego, it's, it's certainly in Hawaii, but especially in San Diego, is for those five minutes or so, mm. if you're anywhere near the coast, everything stops. Mm -hmm. Everyone's quiet. People mm -hmm. walk out of restaurants. They just stand on right. the coast in La Jolla and Pacific Beach. That's right. And everybody is silent. Mm -hmm. And just is encountering extraordinary beauty, right? One of and our, that's when we can evangelize them. And you're exactly right, as Robert Spitzer, Father Robert Spitzer says, it's one of mm. the five yearnings of the soul is for beauty. We're talking with Father Eric Caden, fellow surfer. Uh, he's a Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Boston. In fact, he's uh, responsible for all of the co uh, college ministries in that area. This is the Bear Wastic Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wasik Adventure. I have to tell you guys to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We got, I mean, our, our new website, the developer said, I've never had to build one like this before because we got so much going on. Ocean Sunrise Catechism, the Bear Wasnik Radio Adventure. We have, uh, we have uh, our books, our gear, our, our rosaries, our man cave cigars. We, have, uh, we also have uh, the Long Ride Home TV series. We have just so much going on there, so I can't tell it to you. Here, go to the deepadventure.com website and check it all out. Uh, we have with us today Father Eric Caden. Father Eric, you know, in Hawaii, there's the tradition uh, of when the sun sets that you mm -hmm. hold your breath. And, of course, at that latitude, it lasts about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And you hold your breath and you pray. Now, you, that's an ancient yes. tradition. And so uh, it's about an Our Father long, you know, if you take your mm -hmm. time and do that. And, uh, but, it's, but you're exactly right. It's that moment when everything... It's a still point when the whole world in Hawaii stops for a moment at the sunset. And that's kind of that. That's right. Uh, great, great. Uh, what, what, what hour of the liturgies would that be? Evening prayer? Yeah, yeah. it would be a little Yeah, post evening prayer. Yeah. Yeah. It's just um, a beautiful time to pause and take a deep breath. So now, so you were there in San Diego and you, you witnessed this beautiful, they are, they are spectacular for some reason in San Diego. They're very special. Yeah, it's somehow it's never cloudy. That's why in yeah. I, in Hawaii, very often there's a cloud cover right at the or you know what's the worst? The horizon. Some ugly uh, 
a shipping. A ship. <laughs> you could just. Like a see sailboat it. is nice. <laughs> yeah, the nice little tankers. Yeah, <laughs> you see the sailboat. And you think, it's what are you doing? Be, Move. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Here it comes. It's beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes that tanker and it just blots it out, you know, right at the end. And that's where I do. That's my where I sit sit in my my chair with Augustine or Aquinas or my favorite mm-hmm. authors and sit and have my cigar and have my time of reading about that time. Try to hold my breath. So so tell Absolutely. us about that moment. So that's also another sort of sitting on the mesa moment, right? Oh yeah, I mean, and it was every night. My favorite thing to do that first summer was to be on my board. So you're a few hundred yards off the shore. So you're even more alone in that presence. And I love, I wasn't even looking for waves at that point. Mm-hmm. Just that, what we talked about earlier, that up and down, that almost breathing or that heartbeat and just sit there and just watch the sunset. And as this went on and on, I naturally, as you said, you know, in this ancient tradition of, of holding your breath and praying, you can't help but pray. If you're on a surfboard in the middle of the ocean, it, I don't think it's possible to think or to presume that you're the center of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you, you feel you, small, but you don't feel insignificant. You know what I mean? That's right. Mm-hmm. You feel your, the infinity around you, but it makes you feel, for me as a young man, the thought that came to me was, though I'm small, I'm not insignificant because the creator of all this created me. That's right. Yeah. And he knows you. And, and look at this gift that he's cherishing you. You know, and so that summer I began more and more. I was a big nerd. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, so Harvard, I right? Harvard. Guy, uh, yes, right? I was a Harvard guy. So I loved to read. Yeah. And I went to the library, all the libraries in San Diego, and I got every single book you could get on faith, on the saints, mm. on trying to understand who Jesus is. And I just started reading. I mm. even got really nerdy and my friend would make fun of me. I would say, oh, if you get a really long wave, a really long ride, if you're on a longboard, you can almost like just read a book right there. Yeah, yeah. get your iPad out now, right? Now and, he, and he said to me, that is the nerdiest thing I've ever heard. Actually, <laughs> he Father, I, have to, I actually have to say that I agree. Yeah, that probably <laughs> And he goes, and, why would you have a book out there? And I'm like, I don't know. It just would be great. It's like bringing everything together. Well, yeah, why not go out there and just sit on your board and read too? I mean, you know, it's Yeah, I you love, can do that. Yeah. Love to. The, um, I don't think I've done that yet. Let's do that tomorrow. You go do it. And I'll go do it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to, up here, I'm going to have to go on a big paddle board just so I don't want to ruin the books, you know? Yeah, Stay exactly. Stay on a paddle board. Then yeah. you're safe. Yeah, or get um, one of those waterproof iPads. That's right. So I'm out there, and that whole summer, I'm just in the most natural way discovering more and more and more who the, this one is God who was listening to me, who cared enough to listen to the ramblings in the introduction of an 18 year old guy sitting on this mesa in Utah. And more and more I started to see, just in little ways, because I was a slow learner, I started to learn more and more of encountering Jesus in the sacraments. And confession and mass. That's really and yeah. and it was a long process, and it, I I needed a lot of teachers, a lot of teachers, and a lot of witnesses, and a lot of people whom I looked up to, like, especially when I got back to college, and I began to say, all right, I need to discover more and more about what this is and who this so now, is. So now you have this desire for truth, you have that yearning for, for beauty, for truth and beauty. And, and witness and authentic, mm. authenticity, mm. you know, because I was completely immersed, especially back at Harvard, in a secular worldly pursuit mm. of, of excellence. You know, there wasn't any mediocrity in what I was doing. Right. Um, I was uh, I, I played rugby at Harvard, too. Dude, I, I heard that you and, got a really um, nice picture. Um, you, know, you guys made it all the way to the national championship. Well, we did. We made it to the national championship my senior year out in Stanford. We um, we were an underdog. We were the 15th seed in the Sweet 16 wow. tournament. Wow. And being from Harvard, everyone kind of thought thought little of us. Were you reading now, a book we were, while you played? Were you reading a book well, while you no, played? Well, we were an eclectic <laughs> bunch. You see. He just used had, the word eclectic, everybody. I know. We're well, going we big now. Sing, we would sing the we would sing Disney songs on the buses on the way to, to road games. Um, we had this whole diversity of players. We had one fellow who, if you looked at him, 
he looked like this typical kind of meathead rugby player. He was a big guy, probably 250 pounds. Uh, he was missing a bunch of teeth before the game. He would take his teeth out. <laughs> and he just looked like a big thug. But when you got to know him, you realized he was a professional opera singer. Um, <laughs> he, he spoke perfect Mandarin Chinese. He was a Marshall scholar. And, and he's this exceptional individual now. But he but would take was, his teeth out before was he the game. A, was he reading a book during the game? That's what I want to know. No, of course not. While we he were played. Like, okay. No, because what we would do, we would, we would pull up, having sung all these Disney songs, <laughs> and then we would just mop the floor of some other team. Yeah, we so would just roll out and completely run over them. It wasn't like you're doing a Maori Maori war chant in the in the bus. You're like, yeah, you're no. like singing Disney songs. Yeah, we're watching The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast <laughs> <laughs> and singing along. This has got to be a movie. It's awesome. I mean, it was it was fantastic. It was amazing, and um, so I was just pursuing all these things really excellently, and but it was like I need. I need to know more deeply and personally this, who this Jesus is. And I remember this particular moment of looking around at my life, you know, having these existential moments of, am I happy? And discovering that I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, not in the richest way, not in the way that our Lord intends us to be, mm -hmm. not in the way that my Savior Jesus died for me for. And I remember looking around and thinking, I'm not. And then seeing this friend of mine, Ben, who I was in a Bible study with, who had this strength and this confidence, and he had just this, this peace, like the kind of peace that just radiates. And I remember going up to him one time and thinking, that's what I want. That's what I've been looking for. That's, that's that same peace, but lived out in someone I can talk to right here mm -hmm. that I discovered on that mesa in Utah and just sitting on my board watching sunsets in San Diego. And he said, and I said, Ben, he goes, what? I said, what do you have? Cause that's what I want. Mm. And he said, it's Jesus. And he goes, I know who I am. Mm. I know that my father in heaven loves me. And I'm his son. Mm. And I remember thinking, I understand all those words because I'm a big Harvard nerd. <laughs> I said, but I don't know exactly what you're talking about. And he said, that's okay. And he mentored me in our church language. You know, he discipled me. Mm -hmm. And he helped me to, to discover, he helped me to pray mm -hmm. in, a, in an authentic, personal dialogue with our Lord, with our Savior. And, and he helped me understand what happens at Mass and the sacraments even more deeply of encountering and meeting Jesus. And I just, and, I, and, and in the most real way, fell more and more in love. And I began to see what love does to a man, mm. how we come alive, how all of that pursuit, all of that um, clinging to, to, to things and to the world and to success, which can be important. We're Americans. You know, we want to do great things. But ultimately became empty and shallow, that cling to Jesus and letting your mind in the truth of who he is and your heart and the beauty and the love of who he is enter in was just transformative. And I said this, and I remember thinking, this is what everyone is looking for. And then my, the next logical step was, if this is the greatest thing in the world, and it is, mm. faith and identity and Jesus and his cross and the fact bear that he did all of this for you, that his love your identity and my identity is not contingent. It doesn't depend on what we can do or can't do. It doesn't depend on how great your dual surfing routine was or not, mm -hmm. but is simply a function of his desiring and loving and making you his son or his daughter through baptism. I said, there's nothing greater. And so if that's the greatest thing in the world, that's what I want to do. I said, and then I remember immediately thinking that, I need to be a priest. Okay, well, let's hold on a second. There's no we gotta, greater we gotta, adventure. We got to take a break, and that's that's. I, I don't want. I want to be able to develop that thought. We're talking with Father Eric Caden, mm -hmm. who is uh, the vocation uh, in the first, serves full time in the vocation office in Bo in the Archdiocese of Boston, and is the director of campus ministry. He's mm -hmm. a surfer and an adventurer, and that's why we have him on our show. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. 
good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I uh, want to invite all the men out there to join Bear's Man Cave. You know, it's a, it's a secret Facebook group, so don't bother uh, going to Facebook and asking to be a member. You have to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you'll see the Man Cave. There's a big danger sign that says, danger, don't enter here. Go in there, become a member of the cave, and then you join our secret Facebook group where you'll find men, a bunch of knuckle-draggers, really, who are just kind of stumbling along and wanting to be men of virtue and to really mm -hmm. seek to go deeper to the, with the Lord. And so we share, we challenge, we help equip and mobilize each other. And uh, about once every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat meetup. So we all get together over the computer outside somewhere, usually for me, smoking a cigar and having a shot of whiskey. And we just have a great time together. So we want to invite you men to please join the Man Cave. I want to, we have with, with us uh, our, our guest, Father Eric Caden. He was talking uh, from, the, from the, the, uh, the Mesa was what kind of one was first encounters with the Lord. I won't share mm -hmm. with you what happened with me, but I do know Paul said this. Those of you who know the Lord, and then he stopped, because remember he's dictating this to his, to the person you know writing down this epistle, and he says he was saying those of you who know the Lord, he said, well, rather those of you who are known by God, and what mm -hmm. Father Eric did is he sat down on that cliff and he just started saying, hey God, let me introduce myself to you, and we and, and it's okay to be real like that with the Lord, and remember uh, we can get so busy doing so many good things, but are they God's thing? Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus, many will come to me, Jesus said in that day, and say, Lord, didn't I do many good things in your name? I cast out demons in your name. I, I did all these things in your name. And he say, he said, he'll say, go away from me, you workers of iniquity. The iniquity, because I never knew you. And so we are going to talk now a little bit more with Father Eric about how he, his calling to the priesthood. And then he's going to share with you how you can be known by God, and we'll lead you in a mm. prayer to help you help help you to take that next leap, like that jump out of the out of the airplane, right? Or that or that that's drop, right, dropping into that first dropping overhead in on set. That big wave. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so Father, then yeah. tell us. Then you you had that moment of of uh, of I, realizing. I want, to be a, I, I, I want to radically follow Jesus and bring people to encounter Him to help them to discover the truth of who they are, to help them discover the power of the cross and the power of our Lord's precious blood. You know, one of the things, so I work in vocations, as you said, in the Archdiocese of Boston, one of the vocation directors there. And so I always take as many opportunities as I can to visit with college students, high school students, just any young people, and just sit and talk with them and walk with them. And um, a quick story from three years ago, I was at World Youth Day in Poland, mm. and in Boston, we usually bring a few thousand high school students to World Youth Days, and I'm sure everyone listening knows what World Youth Day is. The Pope, every few years, says to young people, come, and depending on where it is, you know, two to five million show up, and it's, you know, it's an extraordinary festival of, of Catholicism, of, of mass, of sacraments, of talks, of dancing, of just, of being fully alive. And so at the end of the, the official World Youth Day in Poland, after the Pope had had the final mass and the big overnight vigil and you're sleeping and not sleeping on a big field with two million people, um, the group I was with said, we need a little vacation. And so we went down to Zakopane, the mountain region, just in the south of Poland. And so we ended up at a resort, which was a big change from um, sleeping bags on a field with two million people outside. And so the first day, and, and two portable toilets. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so everyone's relaxing that first day. And then we start to get bored. And we think we need to do something more exciting than just sit in this hotel. And the other vocation director and I said, well, I think this is the area that John Paul II, before he was pope and bishop, when he worked with college students, he would bring them down here and they would have adventures. Mm -hmm. They would climb mountains. They would celebrate mass on top. They'd go canoeing. They would do the equivalent of what we do today, skydive, all that stuff. And so we thought, 
let's go find a mountain and climb it and we'll celebrate mass on the top. I'm like, great. All the chaperones are like, I don't know if this is a good idea. I'm like, no, it's a great idea. I don't see any downsides. Mm. So they said, make sure we have enough food. And then we finally found this mountain, which had a beautiful lake on the top. And we said, we can go swimming. And they thought, oh, no, 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 that's not safe. Do we have proper lifeguards? And we're thinking, this is nuts. So finally, we convince everyone. We get 20 people. The next morning, we pull up to this mountain. And the first thing we discover is there's nothing radical about it at all. We see a giant parking lot full of cars. <laughs> we thought, huh. <laughs> you know, we have our supplies and all of our equipment. And then we see, yeah. instead of bushwhacking through the forest up to climb this mountain, there's a 20-foot paved road that slowly meanders up the mountain. And if you're particularly lazy, there's a horse-drawn carriage that'll pick you up. Yeah, so we said, we're not taking a carriage. We're walking. That's living on the edge right there, man. <laughs> that's right. And so for a group concerned with food, as we're walking up, there are conveniently placed <laughs> bathrooms, of course. And there was an ice cream stand halfway up. So, that's <laughs> rugged, man. I hope it was I know. good ice cream. Life was tough. And we get to the top. And there's a giant beer hall. And everyone's drinking beer and eating sausages <laughs> around the Hey, floor. that's tough to do on a hike. <laughs> drinking beer and then hiking afterwards doesn't work. I tried it once. So, um, you know, it took us two hours to get up there. And you could see why people, this had become a vacation spot. It was beautiful. So we did celebrate mass and we did go swimming and everything. And we're walking back down. And I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk to some of these college guys and corner them and convince them in two hours to become a priest. Right. So this one fellow, like an army recruiter on, on, on steroids. Okay. Exactly. We're walking down and I'm like, look at that shiny thing over there. And he's like, what? And the group was about 50 yards ahead. I'm like, perfect. Now he's stuck with me. So we're walking <laughs> down and you know, just guys. So we're talking small talk about how Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback in the world. Talking about the Red Sox, all kinds of sports teams and things. I've heard of, I've heard of <laughs> Tom Brady. Yeah, you might have. Okay. So, and then uh, about an hour into it, I'm like, all right, now's my moment. This is time for the big sell. So I remember saying, Mike, he goes, what? I said, have you ever thought or considered that God might be calling you to serve and to love his people as a priest? And I'll never forget, he stopped. And he said, whoa. I'm like, okay, I've heard that before. And he said, that question freaks me out. And I said, okay, I've heard that response before too. And I said, Mike, why? And this is, I'll never forget, because it was profound coming from this kind of bum high college kid I was talking to. <laughs> and he said, it freaks me out. And we walked over to the edge of the trail of the paved road. And he looked off into like the vast forest. And he said, when you ask that question, it's as if God is saying, I want you to go that way. And he's pointing into the woods. Mm. And then he said, you know, I know where I'm going right now. Like, I know the final destination. This trail leads to the parking lot. And it's sort of the woods because the valley kind of all siphoned into the parking lot. He said, so I know where it goes, but I don't know anything about it. And he said, the path I'm on right now, I know where the bathrooms are. I know where that ice cream stand is. It's nice and safe. It's comfortable. And he goes, that way, I don't know anything about it. I don't know where the dangers are, the risk. I don't know if there's food. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and it's terrifying. And then he concluded with this, though, and this is the point. He said, even though I don't know anything about it, I know that it's much more exciting mm -hmm. and it's a much greater adventure. He goes, but it's terrifying. And then I told him, I said, Mike, but you know what? If it's Jesus who's calling you, then what he's saying is, this is where I am. This is the direction and the path I'm taking. This is the adventure I'm going on. And can you imagine him saying, and I want you to come with me. Mm -hmm. And so if you know him, you have to know him. Otherwise, it's like a crazy man telling you to go off into the woods. Mm -hmm. But if you know him, then he said, I will bring you on the greatest adventure you could ever imagine. I will introduce you to the most extraordinary people, people who will lift you up, people who will draw from you greatness that you couldn't ever imagine. And I'll bring you to some crazy people, mm -hmm. people who want you to rip your hair out and it'll frustrate you beyond all end. I will bring you to my children mm. and I will be with you always. 
And, and that's what, I mean, any vocation, because we're all called to be holy. We're all called to be shocking holy saints. Mm-hmm. You know, none of us are called to be mediocre. Like wherever, whatever our particular vocation, God wants nothing less than extraordinary greatness and a radical following him. And, but we got to know him. Got to know we gotta God. Know him. Well, can you pray? And we got like 30 seconds. Can you, can you lead people to that initial sort of conversion or deeper conversion prayer? Absolutely. 30 seconds. All right, you can so do that. Of course. Let's do it. The Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus, right now, we come before you as your sons and your daughters. To all those listening, I ask you to open their hearts and their minds to know your boldness and your courage and your patience and your generosity, to fill them with your zeal, with your spirit, with your desire for souls. And to all of those listening right now, receive. We don't have to try hard. Right now, the devil and others are saying, you're not good enough. You don't know enough. You're not strong enough. Well, guess what? You're not good enough. You don't know enough. You're not strong enough. But he is. And he does everything. And trust him. And he walks with you. And he is so patient. So Jesus, move in their hearts right now. Let them experience and feel you at this very moment. By the power of your precious blood, by the power of your cross, make saints of every single man, woman, and child listening to you right now. Mm-hmm. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll, we'll end our, our show there. You know, in Hawaii, oh, Father, yeah. we always say aloha, which means to give breath. Aloha. Love. That's right. So I give that shout out to everyone. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back next week. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Thank you for, to our adventure guide today, Father Eric Caden. Aloha. Well, thank you for having me. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.